Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be talking about colored pencils. I'm going to be doing a sort of a demonstration and uh, talking about my various techniques using them. Of course, to do a um, video about colored pencils, I need something to apply the colored pencils to. And so, what I've decided to do is to do a kind of a fan art drawing of a, a very particular <laughs> uh, uh, character, and that is, of course, uh, Santa Claus, or Father Christmas, I think I should say more properly, because I'm going to be doing a tribute to uh, Raymond Briggs and his book Father Christmas, one of my favorite uh, children's picture books of all time, and certainly my favorite Christmas-related uh, children's book. It's such a marvelous uh, story, and I want to, you know, talk a little bit more about it as I work on this drawing, but uh, what I want to do is do a little drawing of uh, Raymond Briggs' uh, version of uh, Santa Claus, and uh, uh, later on be coloring it in, uh, and exclusively with colored pencils. Now, uh, those of you who've been watching my videos for a long time, you know that I've... Uh, uh, done like all, more than 500 videos. Not all of them how to draw videos, but uh, uh, I've been at this for quite a while. Uh, but it occurs to me that I don't think I've ever done a um, video that is 100% colored pencils only. Which is kind of funny to think it's taken me this long to uh, <laughs> to give it a try. Maybe once or twice, but uh, I don't think I've done a video where I focused uh, on giving tips related to colored pencils. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, but I did think uh, it might be a good idea to start by showing how I uh, do a, a pencil sketch to begin with uh, of the character Father Christmas. And while I do that, maybe talk a little bit about uh, the book itself and why I enjoy it so much. Uh, some of you, if you're especially those of you in England, you may already be familiar uh, with this book, but for those of you who are not, uh, it features this really interesting uh, depiction of Santa Claus. He's quite uh, grumpy uh, and uh, a lot of the time, and you really get the feeling that for him, Christmas is uh, a lot of work, <laughs> and he hates the snow, uh, and uh, he sort of dreams of being somewhere warmer, and it's just such a human portrayal of uh, Santa Claus. And also, I would say, sort of unapologetically British version of Santa Claus. He, his language and just... Uh, in fact, the, I've decided to do a drawing of him uh, pouring himself a cup of tea, uh, as he does uh, at least once, maybe twice, over the course of the book. Um, and I just thought it was interesting uh, in that way that... Uh, I think sometimes we, Santa Claus is portrayed as uh, sort of not being from any particular country, sort of beyond nationality, but it's, always, it's interesting, I think, sometimes when... Uh, I'm, I'm erasing the line here of the table. I want to give myself a little more space. I think it's interesting to see a, you know, a very British uh, Santa Claus, and he's like, you know, the last, I think the last house that he has to del deliver presents to is... Uh, the Queen <laughs> of England, you know. Uh, anyway, so I thought um, uh, those of you who had never seen that book, you might want to check it out. I could also say a word right now about, you know, children's picture book illustration. Um, uh, I suppose my channel is here on YouTube is known, uh, to whatever degree it is known, uh, for uh, manga style, anime style. Um, illustrations, but actually, you know, children's picture book illustration um, plays an important role in my life uh, because when I went to college and, and majored in art, my uh, mentor uh, at Kalamazoo College was uh, children's picture book illustrator David Small. And um, so in a kind of a formative period of my life, I was looking a lot at children's uh, picture book illustrations, specifically David's uh, illustrations, and uh, to this day, I'm you know a big fan of children's picture book illustration. And who knows, you know, depending on the response to this video, maybe um, maybe I can do more such videos that relate to uh, picture book style illustrations. I mean, it, it's kind of funny to even try to talk about that because there's so many different uh, styles that fall within the category of uh, picture books. 
that uh, you can't, it's almost impossible to make any generalization about them. But uh, I suppose I would say you know them when you see them sometimes. You see a certain type of illustration, you're like, oh, that looks like it could be from a children's picture book. Anyway, I think I've made enough of the sort of prefatory remarks here, and I do want to get on to um, giving advice about uh, colored pencils. So what I'm going to do is, uh, in time lapse, I'm going to go ahead and finish up my illustration here of Father Christmas. And once that I've got the pencil lines in place, I'm going to come back and do, um, hopefully, as much real time as possible as you watch me use colored pencils uh, to color it in. Okay, so I have all the basic guidelines in place, and uh, now I'm going to take out a Prismacolor uh, Premier, I guess is uh, the category they call this uh, type of colored pencil. It has a fairly soft um, uh, lead to it. Uh, I don't, again, I don't think lead is the right word, <laughs> but the, the material of the, um, uh, of the colored pencil itself is quite soft as it goes down onto the page. A little bit waxy, I would almost say. And they have two different uh, types within the Prismacolor line, uh, two different style of uh, pencil. One of them is this uh, softer version called the Premier, and then the other is called Very Thin. Let me see if I can find one. Um, well, here, this uh, gray pencil is a Prismacolor Very Thin. Now, the difference is, you can see a difference in uh, width a little bit. And then this has a kind of uh, octagonal uh, shape to it that uh, also differentiates it. But this has a much harder lead to it. You have to push down a lot harder to get the color to, uh, you know, come off onto the page. Um, but the benefit of that other variety is that you can get more precision when you sharpen it. You can get a very thin, I guess that's why they call it very thin, you can get a very thin line. Um, and I find actually that uh, I use a combination of the two. I'll bet that most people who use uh, colored pencils also use a combination. I'm not sure of that, though. It would be interesting to ask around and see if... I suppose I can imagine some people just using only these soft ones. You do have to press down real hard, and if you were going to try to cover like an entire huge surface with those very thin, the sort of uh, harder leaded ones, you would, your fingers would start to hurt after a while, I think, just uh, you have to push down so hard. Um, but you can see the speed at which I work here, and I thought what I would do is uh, refocus the camera for a moment so that you can see a little more detail as I uh, continue working into uh, the face, Father Christmas's face, uh, with different colors. So at this point I'm going to switch from this lighter color to a slightly darker version to begin sort of uh, adding shading and just to sort of make his face look a little uh, ruddier or sort of uh, swarthy. Is that the right word? Makes me think of a pirate. Hey, he was a swarthy Father Christmas is what he was. Um, but um, uh, maybe just the, the main takeaway here is that if you attempt to color in an area with just one shade, you're, it's going to be flat looking, almost by definition. Uh, if you want it to seem a little more modeled, a little more three-dimensional, then you're going to have to go in with uh, at least a second color, uh, and probably more than that, three or four different colors. Um, this is unrelated to children's book uh, literature, but I, uh, I've always admired the paintings of uh, Norman Rockwell. If you look at his oil paintings, when it came to the flesh, there were so many different colors uh, mixed in there. Uh, and that's how he got his effect. That's how it started to look so almost photographic in quality. He was not squeezing out one <laughs> type of uh, flesh tone paint and then uh, being satisfied with that. No, he was working in. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to switch now to a sort of reddish brown uh, here to continue adding color. And in this particular circumstance, um, Raymond Briggs, who you know came up with this version of Santa Claus, certainly did not hesitate to give him those apple cheeks and make him quite red. Uh, 
So, yeah, maybe even beyond what we would normally expect <laughs> on a real human face, except for maybe a sunburned human face. Uh, his face his face is going to get quite red in certain points. In fact, I'm switching to a, a straight-up sort of fire engine red here for the nose. Now, you know, there's no way that I'm going to be able to work at this pace for the entire video. Um or it would be like a two-hour, three-hour video. Uh, but I thought I would at least do part of it real-time like this. So you can see the speed at which I work. Now one thing that might surprise you is that I uh, hold off and do the line work at the end, which is to say the black lines that will eventually define his eyes and maybe part of his nose. I hold off and do that stuff at the end. Um, my reasoning is that uh, I can then decide wh where do I need a line. Maybe I don't need a line there, just let the color uh, do the work for me. My feeling is that if I begin with a bunch of black lines, it becomes a little bit like a coloring book. And you're j the color becomes sort of an afterthought rather than a structural component. Now I'm going to just hold on to this uh, red uh, colored pencil here and show you that sometimes if you feel like you can really commit to your color, like in the space of uh, Santa's cap here, I'm just going to go for it because I know that I want this to be red. I want none of the whiteness of the page to be showing through. So I'm just going straight to dark red, which is a little different from some of my other, you know, a lot of my videos I talk about starting light and then going dark uh, little by little. Um, maybe this is to show you that uh, there's just different ways, different paths. And I felt, especially with this Santa Claus, that I didn't have to worry about, you know, what color should his hat be? <laughs> Right? I mean, it's just, that's all, that stuff is decided. It's going to be red, and the, the redder the red, the better, you know? So, um, I feel like in this particular circumstance, I can just jump right into the, the deep, dark color, and you can see me just pushing down until I've kind of obliterated the whiteness of the page below and gone for a nice, bold red color. Now, that's not to say that that's the only... Um, color I'm going to use. Hang on, I'm going to actually do just a little bit of line work here, show you how I would use the white of the page here to create a sort of fuzzy, furry look. And I guess now is as good a time as any to acknowledge that Raymond Briggs, his original illustrations, look to me to be painted quite a lot, rather than colored pencils. So it's maybe a little ironic that, <laughs> that I chose this as my way of teaching colored pencils. But, um... I thought that it's not that far, uh, the look, um, from the paint, the painterly uh, technique that he's using to the colored pencil. Not, so, not such a big leap, and um, my sense is that an awful lot of children's picture book uh, illustrations, a lot of, um, many of them are very heavily reliant on uh, colored pencils in a way that other forms of illustration maybe are not. I mean, it's hard for me to think of, say, comic books, like a superhero comic book. Um, I can't, it's hard for me to imagine that being colored exclusively with colored pencils. I'm sure there are examples, but um, I would say pretty rare. Now I'm going in with a sort of a super dark brown to sort of refine things further. And yeah, you know, as uh, as minute after minute passes by, and you can see that I have covered relatively little of this illustration so far, I can just predict that we are going to have to bring in old Father Christmas time lapse to <laughs> help me uh, get through more of this. So let's do it this way. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go into time lapse to... Um, get further along, sort of as I work, I'm going to think about things that I haven't uh, discussed so far relating to colored pencil technique. And then I'll, when, I, when I'm ready, I'll come back, maybe we'll get about halfway through here, and I'll come back and uh, continue doing some real-time work and uh, also, you know, of course, narrating and giving you further uh, advice. So let's go ahead and uh, get a little more of this done.
Okay, so I went ahead and finished up the coat, and, you know, basically the same technique that I was using up there in the hat. I thought what I would do now is start to work on the beard, and I'm using a sort of um, very pale uh, brown-beige kind of a color, this being based, again, on uh, the original illustrations by uh, Raymond Briggs. And, uh, you know, when you're, when you're shading or coloring in something that's white, <laughs> right, you're sort of uh, paradoxically stuck, because you're like, well, wait a minute, it's white, should I use a white pen color pencil on a white piece of paper? Well, no one's going to see anything. So um, what you have to do is maybe cheat things a little and um, add touches of subtle coloring. Uh, I very frequently will see people use blue um, uh, to indicate shadowing or just maybe give a little more form uh, to an area that is um, actually meant to read as being pure white. Uh, and actually, um, you know, Raymond Briggs, his approach using, um, to me, I would almost call it like an eggshell beige kind of a color, um, is somewhat unique. I don't feel like I've seen, I see that so often in illustrations. I, I feel like the bluish tint is almost a default among illustrators adding uh, shading to uh, white. I'll see like purplish um colors. But there is a nice, as you can see, there is a nice sort of uh, old-fashioned quality to this uh, beige color, and you know, maybe I've picked up a little trick here. <laughs> Next time I need to add shading to something that's white, I won't just grab the uh, bluish uh, shades like I usually do, but maybe consider this uh, eggshell beige. Is that a proper... <laughs> way of describing this. Now I've gone, I've pretty much gone in and used this one color for uh, to sort of sweep across the whole area. I'm imagining light from the right here so we're getting a little bit of shading uh, going on on the left but it's not real harsh lighting it's uh, you know hopefully a subtle lighting. But I thought I would also try bringing out a gray here um, sort of a mid-tone gray now, the original illustrations um, use what appears to be <laughs> my beloved gouache. Who knows, maybe Raymond uh, Briggs is a fan of the white gouache. But I thought, really, um, part of the whole point of this video is to, to uh, limit myself only to colored pencils. So, <gasps> shocker of shockers, I am not going to use white gouache, even, even though I'm... Uh, suspect uh, that that is what was used for adding um, whiskeriness to the whiskers. No, I'm going to just try to limit myself to uh, adding texture by way of colored pencils. And you can see that I'm, you know, I'm limiting my use of the gray compared to what I was doing with the uh, beige. Just uh, letting it come in here and there. I thought maybe over here I can get a little more linear with my use of this gray to begin getting into the realm of texture. But it'll be interesting to see how people respond to this video. I'm always interested in expanding this uh, channel to cover a wide variety of styles, and I, I don't think I've done a real children's picture book kind of an illustration until now. So. If people like it, uh, maybe I'll be doing more in the future. Well, I think the one last thing I'm going to do is show how, you know, as I said, very often you're mixing at least two colors, maybe three. I thought I would try bringing in just a little bit of brown as an additional textural element. Um, I would say, as a general rule, the more colors you mix into an area, the more complex you make that color, um, the more solid, I don't know if solid is right, the, uh, certainly the more finished looking um, it becomes. But maybe just less less flat, I think is maybe what I would say as a, as a general principle. Variety of color gives form, uh, maybe a certain aspect of uh, depth 
that uh, when you use just a single color, and you may do that uh, deliberately. Maybe you you want a style that doesn't look 3D. You want one that looks a little flat. Sometimes people are doing that deliberately. Well, then there's your technique. Just use a single color, uh, and you will get that flat look that you're going for. Anyway, I'm going to actually refocus the camera because a, a, a lot of it is not showing up in frame right now. And uh, I'll do some more time lapse, and then I'll come back when I feel like I have a few more things to say in terms of, um, you know, teaching about uh, color pencils. So I thought I would talk a little bit about how I'm getting this uh, metallic effect here on the, uh, not the teapot, the tea kettle. See, we Americans, we don't. <laughs> We don't use the kettle so often, so <laughs> I'll just get the kettle on. Isn't that like a classic British thing? Uh, anyway, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about how, how I'm trying to get a, a metallic effect here. There is maybe primarily this uh, light gray here. And um, so I built up a sort of base layer of uh, light gray. And then, um, again, keeping in mind the light source of everything coming from the uh, right, that's where I'm going to leave things uh, white and then uh, darken things. But I am, because it's made of metal, chances are that it's a re you know very reflective surface that's going to pick up some bits of light from over there. And that's why I'm not bringing the color all the way to the edge here. And you can see, hopefully, that that begins to create a little bit of a shiny effect. So... That is uh, almost maybe a, a, a little trick that you can employ. You know, light part here, uh, getting darker, darkest point here, and then quite a lot of lightness over there, and that's how you end up with a... In fact, I'll erase away a little here to see if that helps make this area look a little shinier. That's, uh, you know, metallic objects, and those of you who saw my Realism Challenge book, I did a whole chapter on metallic objects, because it's, um, it's kind of like eye candy, almost. The, the contrast, you know, when you get those darks and lights and the, the, the shiny, sparkly things going on, uh, I think, to me, the human eye just sort of delights in, uh, in seeing that metallic effect. Um, one thing I thought I could try, though, is to, instead of limiting this to just grays and maybe a bit of black, is to pull out a uh, blue and show that that is a uh, classic technique of uh, indicating a metallic surface. The cold color blue tends to help sort of sell this as being made out of metal. I hope he's not burning his hand on this metal uh, metal tea kettle that has come right off the stove. Uh, in any case, hopefully that gives you a few pointers on uh, using colored pencils uh, for creating a metallic effect. I'm going to go ahead and you know, try to get a lot more done because I do. I feel like I've blabbed on and on, and I can see that I still have quite a lot to go. So let's go ahead and get uh, a fair amount done, and then I'll be back. Uh, um, maybe to give some advice prior to uh, a final jaunt through to the end of the illustration. All right, so I thought I would come back and uh, show how uh, I used the black colored pencil to uh, put in the final line work. It is a fairly unusual approach to hold off and do the lines at the end. I'm not sure how many other illustrators <laughs> do it besides me, actually. Um, but, uh, yeah, I find it's a useful way of uh, letting the color be as uh, strong and as important uh, in the drawing as possible and uh, making sure that you are not regarding it as, like, as I said earlier, like a coloring book uh, where the lines uh, define everything and then the color comes in at the end to just sort of be a, an extra added touch. Who knows? Let me know if you've ever tried this approach or if you've ever heard of anyone else using this approach. Um, I should say in general that um, colored pencils, it, it strikes me uh, as being a kind of a self-taught medium. I, I suppose there are art classes at the college level 
that would uh, teach you the the traditional use of <laughs> colored pencils. I've never heard of them though, and uh, I certainly never took one. So what you're seeing here is just my approach that I developed over time, and and indeed it's a little unusual because it's not even what I would normally do. Uh, those of you who watch my videos, you know that I tend to combine uh, colored pencils with uh, watercolors, with like sort of a base of watercolors, uh, or a, a base of um, a base layer of uh, markers, and then the, the colored pencils come in at the end. You could almost regard this video as a bit of a challenge video in which I forced myself to use only colored pencils. And it, it's interesting, it creates a different look, a different look from what I normally do, and uh, in that way it's, it's kind of good. It's always good to be trying new things, and maybe I've developed a new technique even over the course of this video. But you see me being, especially in the area of the beard, pretty tentative, and this is uh, again based on uh, Raymond Briggs' original illustrations. He was doing his black line work with ink. Um, but uh, I did notice that in the area of the beard, and especially the edge of the beard, he didn't use ink at all. In fact, I'm cheating things a little by putting in some defining line work over here. He really did uh, do this, the, the fuzzy hair and beard area, without any uh, defining line work, just uh, to make it look all that more fuzzy, right? If I went along the edge of this with black lines, I'd be sort of caging in uh, that area, and it wouldn't look so fluffy. So, I think that probably brings us uh, to the end of this last real-time segment here. I'm going to go ahead and bring in Father Time Lapse. <laughs> Old Father Time Lapse, who helped me finish off uh, the illustration. You're going to see me, I would think, mainly going through with the black lines, but maybe having to touch things up uh, with color here and there throughout, and then uh, I'll be back with a few final words. All right, well, there's my video on how to use colored pencils to add color to an illustration. Let me know what you thought of it, and let me know what you think about uh, children's book illustration styles as a potential, um, you know, topic for future videos. I'd be happy to do more. I had a lot of fun doing this one. It felt like quite a change of pace from what I usually do. But uh, let's go ahead and thank anyone who supported me by getting any of my books, like Mickey Falls or Brody's Ghost, my two graphic novel series. Also, The Realism Challenge, my book about how to make hyper-realistic illustrations and, of course, Mastering Manga and Mastering Manga 2, my How to Draw Manga books. And it's not my book, but hey, let's just put it in here. Father Christmas by Raymond Briggs. Just a fantastic uh, children's picture book. If you've never read it, I encourage you to check it out. And I will put a link uh, for purchasing this book uh, in uh, the uh, info box below this video. But for now, let me go ahead and lay down this black colored pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful, and I'll be back with another one real soon.